let's go to the final part here uh, about these documents. Just how did these come about? So like I said, Bellingcat, which, you know, it's an organization very controversial. They did their investigation, how other outlets are looking into it, relying on little bits and clues. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. The Wall Street Journal, um, relying both on Bellingcat reporting, but some of their own original reporting, says, one of the most significant leaks of highly classified information in recent history began amongst a small group of posters on a messaging channel that trafficked in memes, jokes, and, quote, racist talk. Now, first of all, any internet uh, community that is anonymous will of course devolve into all kinds of shit posting. So let's not say that that's necessarily a bad thing for this group. Now, what exactly was posted there? An anonymous member of this group, which has just over a dozen users, started posting files, many labeled as top secret, sometime in January, including some of the intercepted communications, what we've talked about here about US allies, the details of American penetration plans inside of Russia. Then. These documents, which actually at one time numbered in the hundreds, actually stayed in this tiny Discord group up until early March. Basically, nobody in the group uh, found it significant enough to publicize. Nobody in Discord was really aware of it. Nobody in the public. And over these one to two month period, more and more of these documents began appearing inside of this Discord. Then though, another user who was part of this group reposted several dozen images to another group with a much larger audience. This is kind of when the trail picks up. That is where, at quote, at least 10 files migrated to a Minecraft computer game Discord server. Then what happened is that on Wednesday, Russian propaganda accounts on Telegram, which I have now joined, so thank you, uh, Telegram. My phone is now full of acrylic messaging. Mm -hmm. uh, they, what they did is they took those, repurposed specifically the KIA document, spread like wildfire, and that's when CounterPoints covered it for the very first time on Friday with the initial indication. Since that time, on Friday, the CounterPoints covered it. We and some other outlets have been able to obtain a portion of these documents. Unfortunately, we have nobody, it seems, but from what I can tell, and I've gone deep, has the original set of the hundreds of documents that this man posted. Discord nuked the original server. They nuked the Minecraft server as well. And currently, you know, we have about half of what was publicly posted um, on these uh, on this website. But the re the other half, by the way. If you have them, please, please send it to us. Uh, I would love to read it. But from what I can tell, based on some of the forensic other people that I've interacted with um, around this crystal, they kind of appear to be gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's I mean, a tragedy for us. None yeah. of the mainstream outlets right. have them either. No, nobody has. The, everybody, yeah. like the most anybody has is what we've been yeah. able to obtain. Um, and so, yeah, those original documents, like I'd have to presume, presume you'd have to presume the Russian government mm -hmm. has them. You'd have to presume that the U.S. government has them, but they have managed to, it seems like, wholly scrub them from right. the internet. I mean, one of the things that's fascinating here is sometimes you can delude yourself into thinking that the U.S. government it acts in the way that it's portrayed in the military in the in the movies, mm -hmm. like this super, you know, high tech. They're on top of their game in every way. But it's extraordinary. These documents they were hanging out there for months before anybody noticed, before the U.S. government noticed. And I mean, you can sort of understand it because how could you possibly be monitoring like no, all possible. of the 20,000 right. Discord servers, et cetera. But it's just kind of wild to think that this top secret, highly classified information has been out there publicly posted for months and it only just recently came to the attention of the news media and the U.S. government who are completely scrambling now. and. Yeah, you know, they had a quote in here to give you a sense of how freaked out they are, how angry and upset and like humiliated, embarrassed, whatever they are about this disclosure. They interviewed a former FBI senior executive um, who now is with some government contracting firm. And he said, they are going to be looking to get to the bottom of who did it as expeditiously as possible. They're going to be sparing no resource. The FBI is approaching this as if someone has committed a treasonous <laughs> act. And uh, one of the things they point to that will be relevant in terms of their search is something we mentioned briefly yesterday, which is that if you look at these documents, you know, it's 
they were folded up, they're unfolded. They try to like flatten them out and then they just laid them on top of like whatever was around and took pictures of them. And so in the background of the documents, you can see what they describe as a variety of items that you can see in the margin of the photos, including Gorilla Glue, shoes, and instructions for a Glasshawk HD spotting scope, details they say could facilitate the search for the leaker. So they are gonna come after this individual or individuals um, with the full force of the US government. But you know, in my opinion, this person frankly is a hero. Oh, absolutely. Um, to get this kind of accurate, you know, very recent, like weeks old information about the US's view of this war what we're doing, what what our understanding of what Ukraine is doing, understanding of what Russia is doing, our understanding of what our allies are doing. It's absolutely critical for the U.S. public to be informed about the reality of what's happening, not the spin that's being fed to us by the U.S. government and regurgitating and regurgitated in large part by uh, mainstream news outlets. And the last thing I'll say, Sagar, is I think it's been telling too. Some of these outlets, you know, I don't want to besmirch them. They've done a good job reporting some of the sound. I think the New York Times, in particular, like publishing some of the documents. But the way they frame it, oh, it's BS. You know, yeah. it's very selective in the pieces that they choose to report out. And um, you know, one of the parts that's certainly most sensitive is the fact that uh, Ukraine is uh, may have already run out of like their air defense missiles. And the location of their air defense, all of that is very sensitive. And that got reported out, understandably so. But that's the sort of thing that can actually strengthen the hand of the Hawks by saying like, oh, we gotta do more and we gotta help them and we gotta send them fighter jets, et cetera. Things like China's red lines, things like the fact that Zelensky does want to strike within you, uh, within Russia and the only reason he hasn't is because we haven't provided long-term missiles. Interesting that those pieces don't get reported yep. out. And then the other thing that they consistently emphasize is like, oh, we're so deep inside of like Russia. We've got these great sources in terms of Russia. We've infiltrated mm -hmm. all of their various agencies, et cetera. So even the way that this has been reported out by the mainstream press, I think has been revealing of a um, particular hawkish bias that exists across the board. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even today, first, the front page editorial from the Wall Street Journal, wartime intelligence leaks can sink allies. And they're basically going after the leaker, being like, he's responsible for possibly sinking Ukraine. And this is America's fault. No, it's America. Whatever has happened here is not on the leaker. If anything, it's on the U.S. government for lying to us and the Ukrainians, frankly, about what their intentions are yeah. and about their ability to sustain. You're the ones who lied. He just told us the truth, or she, whoever this person is. I'm guessing he, just based on some of the paraphernalia in the background. But <laughs> look, whoever this person is, uh, they did us all a great service. In fact, in the history of significant military leaks, this appears to be probably the most significant national security leak since the Edward Snowden documents. Yeah. And in those documents, what a lot of uh, analysts have been saying is what makes this one the most extraordinary is the real-time nature of it, is that you and I can sit here I've literally got the doc in front of me, and I can read what President Zelensky was privately saying, according to the U.S. intelligence community, a month and a half ago. Yeah. That is, that's really the crazy part. Some of the biggest revelations from WikiLeaks and other they were years old now at that point. I'm not saying they weren't important. They absolutely were. Uh, the WikiLeaks one, even in terms of uh, the National Security Agency, the NSA leaks that Edward Snowden gave us, these were programs that were spun up, spin, spun up post 9-11. They detailed the security infrastructure that had been in place for decades. I mean, this is real-time data from only a month ago about Ukraine's possible counteroffensive. Oh, turns out that uh, the U.S intelligence and military community privately believes there's no way that they're going to have a successful spring counteroffensive. They also believe the same thing for Russia. Some of the other leaks, one we didn't even get to is Egypt. You know, this is a crazy leak. Egypt, uh, it was inside the docs. The Washington Post ended up reporting it out. They, on February 1st, were privately going to send weapons to Russia. They are the second largest recipient of U.S. military aid in the world. And they did so privately right after Secretary of State Anthony Blinken was there on the ground. We have no respect. Like the rest of the world looks at us like a joke. They're willing to take our money, but then they won't even do what we want them to do. I'm not saying Egypt should do what we want them to do. More what I'm saying is it is clear that outside of the Western world, the entire Ukraine first narrative, Russia bad, all this stuff, they're just not buying it. We're not just talking about Brazil, 
India, and China. We are talking about Egypt. We're talking about South Korea. We're talking about Israel, some of the closest U.S. allies over decades. So I think that is the most significant, important thing that has come out of these documents. And uh, unfortunately, though, given the small number of people that were inside this Discord server, Crystal, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that all the DOJ has to do is subpoena the IP addresses of all 10, 12 people or whatever who are inside of this thing. And, you know, whoever it is, good luck to you. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, there was there was also some stuff in there about the UAE deepening their oh, engagement that's right. with uh, with Russia. That was one that the mainstream press has reported um, in mid January. <laughs> officials claimed UAE security service officials in Russia had agreed to work together against U.S. and U.K. intelligence agencies, according to newly acquired Signals Intelligence. That's uh, from one of these documents as well. So it really does show you, as you were saying, that you know. What we wanted the world to do with regard to the Ukraine war is not did not come to fruition. Even yeah. within NATO, I mean, you see, you know, France and uh, Germany certainly have a different view towards China mm-hmm. and different approach here. There's a, a lot of divides, and we have been wildly unable to really get the world on our side and convince them that this is truly some fight over democratic values or human rights or anything of the sort. They're not buying it. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.